for me personally, the answer to the question, do I like Chloe Price, is, uh, it's complicated because it's yes and no at the same time. Because I just don't like her as a character in the sense that I just find her really annoying and cringy. Get that she can be annoying to some people. I really love her. Despite her flaws as a human being, she is a very strong character. I personally don't. She never takes responsibility for anything in her life and she even seems to start a lot of her problems. I fucking love Chloe. I think she's a great character. She does think the world revolves around her, but what teenager with abandonment issues won it? Shh. Of course, I love Chloe Price. And then sometimes it can be a little corny, but other than that, she's not the worst character. Do I like Chloe Price? Chloe's conscious, confusing as it can be, cleverly counters Chloe's callous coping mechanism. She would show up for you if you needed her middle of the night. If anything, I think we actually need more Chloes in this world filled with Victorias. Uh, who the hell is Chloe Price? Chloe Price is a very controversial character. At the end of Life is Strange, you're left with only two choices. Save your town, Arcadia Bay, or save Chloe. Well, if you put in all the factors, it's up to you to decide. Most people I know, as you can clearly see, have grown a pretty strong attachment to Chloe. Others, not so much. So the question lingers, is Chloe Price a good person? Well, let's start off by getting to know her. During the time of the original Life is Strange game, Chloe Price is a 19-year-old girl who lives in Arcadia Bay, with her mother Joy and stepfather David. Her and her stepfather do not have a good relationship. Chloe's father passing away in a car accident years prior definitely adds to the resentment and hatred towards her stepfather, amongst other things, and also plays a pretty big part in her character's story. Chloe is seen rocking blue hair, a large sleeve tattoo, skull shirt, and a beanie fully transformed into her alternate Chloe personality. Some of her traits include loyal, selfish, hot-headed, short-tempered, rebel, stubborn, protective, and faithful for the most part. Before we get on to talking about the pros and cons of Chloe, let's talk a little bit more about her friend Max, the main protagonist of the game. Another question we can ask ourselves, is Max a good friend? Max has been Chloe's friend since they were children, literally tied to the hip. Chloe lost her friend the exact same day her father was buried. Ouch. When Chloe needed her the most, she was gone. Five years later, Max shows back up to Arcadia Bay and unintentionally finds herself reuniting with Chloe again. Now, of course, you can say that Max is a horrible friend for leaving, but was she really in control? No, her parents were. So I don't really find it equitable to put all of the blame on Max. If you take a look at the text between Max and Chloe after her father's death, you can see that while Chloe did try to reach out through text shown between them in the game, Max got carried away in her own world, practically leaving Arcadia Bay and Chloe behind, without really wanting to revisit any part of it. I think Max, being Chloe's best friend, could have reached out to her. I mean, especially if you left so frantically and Chloe had absolutely no support. With Joyce, her mom, more Morning on her own. Max could have reached out, checked up. I mean, morally, that's what I would do. Because this is when she needed that support, and the only person that can give it to her wasn't there. In the prequel, you see Chloe talk about Max, showing that she still has love for her, even with her not being around. This is also where we kind of see that mother and daughter duo break. While Joyce was mourning on her own, Chloe was too. Since Chloe's father was such an important part of both their lives, I feel they would have benefited from mourning together and growing together to make their bond stronger and healthier. But it doesn't always work that way. Joyce eventually moved on, finding David, and Chloe really didn't. She was still mourning, being hostile, not having anyone to depend on, which is where her best friend Rachel came in, her angel, to save her. What's interesting is that you see the same thing happen between the relationship between Joyce and David. In Life is Strange 2, if you chose the sacrifice Chloe option, you find out that David and Joyce separate because she couldn't handle her daughter's death. Yes, thankfully they keep in contact, but as you can see, this was another time Joyce had blocked herself off to the point where she lost him too. Now, don't mistake in this for Joyce being a bad mother. She constantly cooks for her, tries to keep her out of trouble, defending her, and honestly takes her bullshit for the most part. Their relationship isn't perfect, but there is still love there. David, Chloe's stepfather, is an abuser, depending on your choices, of course. Some scenes even implying that David had actually hit Chloe before this, and it wasn't just a one-time thing. David becomes a character that somewhat redeems himself towards the end, but he's extremely hard-headed 
good. You can tell that in some aspects he does mean well, but has zero clue on how to approach anything correctly. It being more complicated for him, given Chloe's unappealing attitude towards him, there's always a clash. Was Rachel a good influence on Chloe at all? Compared to before the storm Chloe and the first game's Chloe, you can see that she has finally turned herself into this completely different version of herself, to the point of no return. Before the storm and before Chloe even really knowing Rachel, we see her committing some outlandish acts at the start of the game, like trying to get her way past the bouncer, standing in front of an ongoing train, and even things like drawing graffiti in places that she shouldn't. Rachel was the one that put Chloe on the bandwagon to say, Hella and became the drive to unlocking the Chloe we know today. Clearly seeing this at the end with Chloe changing her hair color, getting a tattoo, and growing more attachment to Rachel, something that had been foreign to her for a while because of her fear of losing someone else and her attachment issues. And well, unlucky for her, she did once again, which led her to where she is now. Now let's talk about some good things about Chloe. She's an extremely flawed person. I'm not saying that that's a good thing, but it's good in a sense where it makes her character relatable to others, young and old. People can see something in Chloe that they could relate to, whether it's going down a hard path, losing a friend, making a friend, and being rebellious and unafraid to take chances for yourself or the people you love. Chloe is a loyal friend. Even with Max leaving and not contacting her for so many years, Chloe basically comes in with open arms and re-accepts her friendship again. Being a little weary at first, asking for subtle things like to prove her friendship, like the use of her powers, or making her do things to prove her loyalty. But for the most part, she's a committed friend. You also have to include that Chloe was the one that put up all the missing posters for Rachel Amber everywhere. While people shortly forgot, she was still out there finding ways for people to listen. Even throughout this whole story, story, it's Chloe searching for her lost friend. And with some bumps in the road, like finding out about Rachel's secret relationship with Frank, she still never stops trying. Chloe lost a lot of her childhood, but throughout the story you see that that's still inside of her. Despite all the tragedy she's been through, she's always looking for a way to have an adventure and have fun. Almost like when she and Max were younger, and would pretend that they were pirates searching for treasure and going on these mythical quests. Only at this point in time, they're searching for a human being. She's not afraid to speak up about what's right wrong. An example of this is when we learn more about her character in Before the Storm. Her principal is accusing her of certain things, and Chloe doesn't tolerate it because of how one-sided the whole situation is. Even with Rachel defending her, the principal has his own personal opinions on Chloe, but that doesn't stop her from speaking up. Chloe is not a shallow written character. She's very complex, which makes her more interesting as a character. For someone who's been through what she has, it's totally emotionally valid for her to have some type of attitude towards certain people at times. Not saying that it's always the best and could sometimes go a little overboard where it's just plain out inconsiderate, but that's depending on your choices and the player to decide. And while there are good things about Chloe, there are some cons. Chloe Price can be very selfish at times. Actually, 50% of the time, she might annoy you to death and question whether she's worth saving. An example of this can be seen during the diner scene. As Max is trying to explain to Chloe about her brand new power, the first thing that comes to Chloe's mind is it's only a toy and who they could bang. Chloe also immediately suggests they go play around with the power. Hey, we have to play. I don't have time. You did not just say that. Chloe likes to do a lot of victim blaming throughout this game. For example, blaming her mother for being the reason her father died because she asked for a ride home, stating that she has to blame someone, otherwise it's her fault. Chloe, you can't keep blaming me and everybody for everything wrong in your life. It's so not fair. I gotta blame somebody, otherwise it's all my fault. Fuck that. Chloe can be narcissistic. She thinks the world revolves around her, which at some point everyone might think about themselves too. In one scene while Chloe comes downstairs to see her mom and Max, she immediately thinks they're talking about it's her. The last time I ever saw Chloe, truly happy. Did you guys have a bonding session about how fucked up I am? It's not always about you. Chloe, please, it's too early to start picking a fight. Heed instead. Keep the warden busy while you go peek in the garage. Now stop whispering or I'll know you're talking about me. Stop being so nosy, mother. Jeez, I can't do anything around here without everybody getting up in my shit. Ugh, 
No one can even joke with you, Chloe. You fly off the handle like that. Excuse me. I have to use the bathroom. Sure, run off and pee when you should back me up. You also have to put into consideration that Joyce hasn't seen Max in years. I think this would have been a great time to catch up with another person you used to be around most of your childhood. Chloe can be extremely careless. So careless where it winds up to her getting herself killed at one point. Here we have David claiming that Chloe stole one of his guns. She claims she didn't. Then later in that scene, we see her pull it out from wherever she was hiding it. Then proceeds to point it at Max. I don't care if a gun is not loaded. Loaded, do not point that thing at me. Later in the game, as Chloe wants to test Max's powers out, she demands her to find some glass bottles for her to shoot, then proceeds to shoot a car bumper that ricochets the bullet into her. Jesus, I sh shot myself! Ugh, I shot myself! Back up, back Stupid up! Stupid gun! Hold on, Chloe. Chloe likes to gaslight a lot. One example is when Max gets a call from Kate. And if you played the first game, you would know that Kate is going through a really rough time and can use all the emotional support she can get. This is the response when you decide to choose Kate over Chloe. Okay, Supergirl, let's go to my secret place. Don't even answer. We have places to go and people to do. Come on, before mom starts some more shit, let's bail. It's Kate Marsh from Blackwell. Big whoop. You don't call me once in five years and now you're all over some biatch you see every day at school? I see how you roll. So go ahead, chat up Kate Marsh from Blackwell. I've got other people to hang out with too. Hey Kate, what's up? Please, don't let your best friend get in the way. You okay? Can you say that Chloe is a vastly different person from before the storm to the first game? Do you think that without certain events happening, she wouldn't have changed? How about if Rachel lived and her father didn't? Well, this can kind of be answered given the comic book series, if you consider it canon. And it seems that they're living their best life in that timeline. She just doesn't have Max. But what if her father was still alive? Would she just be the girl who loves science? Well, lucky for us, this question is also answered. When Max alters reality and allows William to live, Chloe is the one that ends up in a car crash and becomes paralyzed. She's still a science freak, but her medical bills are going through the roof. And this version of Chloe is a much more reserved version of herself, ironically hating the word Hella, a word she's known for using the most. So the, the less cringe version of Chloe, yes, no, maybe, <laughs> don't come for me. Here you have to make a decision whether you want to pull the plug on her or not. Personally, I always do since she asks and I feel nothing but sympathy for her and her family. Now, when viewing the farewell episode, you can kind of tell Chloe has this rebellious fire in her, yet at the time it's more subtle, playful, less dangerous or harming. She was just a kid at the time. The problem here is that the games contradict each other. I'm not gonna get too into detail. In Before the Storm, we see Chloe having memories of her father, which from time to time start to grow darker and darker. Towards the end, we see her finally coming to some type of comfort, maybe even being able to move on. And we even see her trying to grow a better relationship with her mom and David, as well as having Rachel around. But in the first game, we see Chloe doing a lot of victim blaming, not having a good relationship with David, and on the rocks with her mother. Which means, what was the point of all this character development if we already knew it would mean nothing in the first place? Now, you could say that she fell down that dark path when Rachel went missing and it became a path to no return, and to try to empathize with all the loss she had in her life, not really having anyone anymore. While she did start to embody this character at the end of Before the Storm, but I feel that at the start of the first game, this is where she becomes the full version of Chloe Price. And to make it worse, Max kind of puts up with a lot of the things that Chloe does to her, because of her guilt and trying to fix a relationship that is only built on one thing at the moment. Nostalgia at this point in time, these two are in completely different headspaces. This makes it worse to develop Chloe because she doesn't hear a no or this is bad, depending on your choices, of course. Max allows Chloe to do what she wants to do, even if Chloe might not always be right. People make mistakes and that's okay. But how can someone grow from their mistakes if they're not told when they're wrong? Go in there and be your friend. I'll wait out here so you can chill by yourselves. I wasn't... Total dick for blowing a fuse when you answered Kate's call the other day. Good thing you ignored me. 
I had no idea what shit she was going through. And you saved her. Like me. I'm sorry. Thanks, Chloe. But don't be sorry. We're all on the same team. Team Max. It's so obviously bad that even towards the end, another rendition of Max literally tells her that she's basically an idiot for trying to make this friendship work. Chloe still feels this hostility and resentment because of her fear to grow any sort of new attachment. And as I said before, you have two choices, save Chloe or Arcadia Bay. One can say that saving Chloe is the correct choice because without Chloe, Max isn't Max. Chloe is the emotional drive of the story and a piece of Max that she can't lose. Without her, she isn't whole. One can infer that the whole story becomes pointless and all that work and time altering is for absolutely nothing since Max didn't do what she said she would, not let go again. Then on the other hand, it's one person against thousands of people. And if the whole game is you trying to save Chloe from constantly dying, is it even worth it to save her? I mean, technically speaking, wouldn't she just keep on dying? To sum this video up, I don't really have a final answer to these questions. And that's because there is no canon ending, and the game has so many different options that it comes down to the player themselves. I think that at the end of the day, Chloe is a a good and bad person. Only you can decide, and everyone should respect your opinions. What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear them, so be sure to write them in the comments down below. Thanks again to all the LIS creators that hopped on this video. Be sure to check them out if you guys love LIS and want to check out some new content. The reason I like her is because of the sort of friend she is. Chloe doesn't really connect with a lot of people in the stories, but I really respect the fact that she firms the connections she already has. Again, in cases of a select few people. I also really like her hair, by the way. Now coming to things that I don't like, first up, some of her reactions just come out of nowhere like someone who doesn't have a safe word. And the second one is that she can be straight up mean for no apparent reason at points. And this happens especially with Joyce. Also, no matter how you put it, taking money from a fund that is reserved for people in need just doesn't it right in my book in any shape or form. Without Chloe, you know, Max is kind of the center point. Obviously, she's the main character. She's my favorite character in Life is Strange in general, but it really doesn't work without feeling something for Chloe. The entire journey of what Max is doing ending with the big decision like it or hate it and then also you go through the entire game and chloe just consistently dies and you have to figure out a way to save her and just so much pain and the experience that chloe has gone through her entire life so i personally don't like chloe price i feel like she's really self-centered and selfish but i mostly don't like her because i just don't like her as a character in the sense that i just find her really annoying and cringy i feel like most of her lines are really corny and the self-centeredness and the selfishness just kind of adds to that and she's had her fair share of loss and abandonment issues throughout the Life is Strange series. As a person who has experienced both of these things, I like that I can relate to her and I know that other people feel the same. They feel they can relate to Chloe as a character. I appreciate that the writers of the series do not sugarcoat her suffering at all in any way. And a lot of the scenes and dialogue with Chloe is just extremely raw and you don't really find many games doing that or have characters like that she still has a good heart thank you so much for purple doe for having me on your channel i really appreciate it don't forget to like and subscribe two there's no character development within any of the chapters so at the end when she chooses to self-sacrifice it just feels fake and in three having a mental illness doesn't absolve you of your actions especially if they're harmful to others it just doesn't at all and while chloe price got on my nerves plenty of times while I was playing through season one of Life is Strange. I think that Deck Nine did a really good job explaining why Chloe acts the way that she does. And I don't think that she would go through this great character development in the span of a week. Near the end of the story, she does show that she has a change of heart. She has someone that she cares about now. She's very relatable. She's very edgy. She's very angsty. She's very pretty. But she can be pretty annoying sometimes. And she's also selfish and then sometimes it can be a little corny. But other than that, she's not the worst character. But there is one very interesting scene that almost redeems Chloe. In episode four, if the player lets Chloe kill Frank, she becomes apologetic, and instead of blaming Max, Chloe takes responsibility for her own actions. I cannot actually relate to her, but I admire her a lot. Like, she lost William, she kinda lost Max, then she lost Rachel, yet she remained the same funny, witty, lively, self-dependent, confident person that most of all I feel like you really can rely on. Uh... 
who the hell is Chloe Price? 